Alright guys, so welcome back to day 5, technically day 6, no, day 5, day 5, uh, disregard that, um, and today we're going to start working on the MNIST digit recognizer problem, um, I think they do have some, yeah, they have a tutorial on here, so I am probably going to go through that just to gain an understanding, because I haven't done enough with computer vision. Um, but it will teach me, I will comment my code, and of course we'll always be on the GitHub channel for you guys to, channel, the GitHub repo for you guys to go look at yourselves if you want to have a look at it, um, and follow along, or see how I got to where I got. But before that, I did want to resubmit my problem, and this is the latest one that we ran. So I couldn't submit it because they had the upload limitation, but I want to submit this, see what we got. We actually got a worse score, so beautiful, great. I waited all that time for nothing that important. It's actually crazy that logistic regression just by itself, you know, was uh, working and did that good. So huh. anyways, I don't like this site, how they limit submissions. I guess it's probably to help their server load, but I don't enjoy it at all, so. Anyways, uh, I'm going to read through this again. As usual, we'll stop at anything that I deem important and let you guys know and try to teach you while I am learning myself. I also have ramen.
so what's actually funny is Kaggle does limit entries to five a day. I, I haven't used it enough to really notice that, but maybe I was going a little bit too hard on driven data, but yeah, it's whatever. At least they sort of set up the data better. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm learning. Okay. So there's quite a few different tutorials with Python. Um, I'm going to start off with the deep neural network. Uh, that's probably all I'll do. <laughs> I might look into this dimensionality reduction because that's something I like to learn about more. Um, I've done this before, but I honestly didn't really understand it that much. I think it's a way, there's different techniques to do this, but it's basically just getting rid of dimensions um, or features that don't really have any correlation to the result that you're looking for and that makes your um, training time a lot faster. Visual Studio Code, let's go Got all the ramen. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go wash this bowl real quick and then get back to work.
Alright, so what I'm going to do is actually use a Jupyter Notebook, and what Jupyter does... Uh, there it is. So what Jupyter does is it's what's called a notebook, and that basically allows you to run code in cells. And you, you get the idea once you see me start to do it. Um, that's just an actual Py file. So we're going to open up a new Python 3 file, a uh, new notebook. And so we have these different cells, which we can choose like in the order of how we want to run uh, our code in. And it's useful because it allows you to consolidate like parts of code and I don't know, you can also have Markdown in it too, and it's a lot easier. It'll actually be formatted Markdown so that way you can see it. Uh, if you've never used Jupyter before, you should. It's really useful, really helpful, um, and it's gaining a lot of popularity. So I could tell that she was using a Jupyter Notebook from this. I didn't even notice the end, but uh, this matplotlib inline is basically saying show the matplotlib uh, graphs in the actual notebook itself so we're just going to do all these import functions uh, I'm also going to copy this line of code it's a comment just crediting her and her notebook and start my coding I really don't like copying because I know that this is not how I learn the best So what I'm going to do is just try and see, like, try and guess what I'm going to need, and then use Kira's to implement it. Kira's, uh, Kira's. I'm not sure how it's said. I also don't know the Kira's uh, library enough. I'm a little bit more familiar with TensorFlow, so probably going to need a little bit of hand holding here as I get through this. I just don't understand how, like the process, the workflow of how deep learning works. I understand machine learning very well, but creating a neural network, definitely not as well versed in. And honestly, I'd say that copying code is probably like the worst way to learn, but it's a decent way. That's how I learned to code at the beginning when I didn't understand anything that I was doing. I just watched tutorials, try to understand what the people were explaining to me, but I just typed down the code that they were writing. And that's how I learned Java at like 11 or 12. So it's definitely a viable option. I think like looking at documentation is honestly the best way to learn it. Um, but the problem is I don't have a grasp of how to create a deep learning thing. So I don't know like the processes that I have to go through at first. So this will be helpful at first and give me a point of reference for understanding how to set up a neural network in the future. In which case, I'll know, oh, hey, I need to do like these five things. Look it up in the documentation curates then. And what also might be interesting to do is do a TensorFlow version of this, which would be very smart because then that helps me understand not only two different uh, deep learning libraries in Python, but also have to go through the documentation of TensorFlow and understand more of it. All right. So we're going to run that. 
see if we get any errors. Yeah, it's using a TensorFlow backend. So now I need to go download the data. I already joined the competition, I thought. Yeah. Okay, so data. Sort of off topic, but now I really want to create like tutorial videos, short tutorial videos for Python, because I know Python so well. Just it's me gloating. Like I know Python. I love Python. Oh, Python's my favorite. I don't know deep learning too well, but Python in and out I know. I won the or did not win. Got third place at a competition at Lockheed Martin called CodeQuest, which is a competitive programming competition. Man, those are difficult, but super fun. I love those. I'm getting off topic. All right, so this makes sense. I like this. I know I definitely understand this because I did it with the machine learning. We're just reading in the uh, training data into s using pandas. And this is part of the stuff that I did not do, but I could have done it. I know what I'm doing here. We're just basically getting a sense of what our data is looking like. Um, understand. So basically, um, I have two points here. One, the first thing that you want to do whenever you're starting a machine learning, deep learning thing is understand your data, understand what's structured like. So for this one, it's the first column is the label. And this label is going to tell us what number we're actually seeing here. And this is our results. All these pixels, which keep on going on until 783, are either one or zero values, I think. Uh, it's actually a good little exercise here. Because I don't know if it's w Boolean, if it's just one or zero. I don't know if that made sense. I don't know if these are just one to zero or if they're from zero to one. Okay, no. So 
So this is good. This is good. A little exercise to go through and understand my data. Understand if it's just a 1 or a 0 to indicate whether there is some value, or if it's on a scale of 0 to 255, which it most likely is. I sort of the wrong way. And 0 to 255 is indicating how much white or gray in the sense because it's a grayscale value. Um, we basically just want to see so grayscale is going to be from 0 to 255 I think. I actually really don't know and need to look this up. I'm going to favorite these, save these to my... Let's see if this chick has gone through this. So what I'm going to do to find this out is actually go to the MNIST data set and try to read more about it. Okay, so I had to go through to a blog uh, to find this out, but we are going from values of 0 to 255. So that just helps frame our problem that we're doing right now. But anyways, now we will go insert another cell. Not like that. Let's go ahead and delete that cell. Delete cell. So our test, I like this, I understand. So same thing, we don't really see any values in the pixels themselves, but they exist somewhere. These are the top left pixels and the images are centered, so it makes sense that we don't see anything. And these ending values are the bottom right, so you're unlikely to have uh, pixels being activated in there anyways. All right, so I did do this before in getting the uh, training data separated into our features and then our results. She uses a different function on this called iLock. And it just basically grabs what this first line is doing is it's grabbing all the pixel values, disregarding the very first column, because obviously we do not want to see our machine learning algorithm. Uh, we don't want to give it those results. 
for the Y train, she's using the same thing except only go to that first column and get the pixel values, our results. And she's commented this uh, well. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I like that she's using this. I don't understand dialog enough, but I can see what this code is doing. So I appreciate it. And then with the as type, we're basically converting it to a float. So if you don't really understand Python enough, let me break this down real quick. Um, the iLock is going through the list of values. So it's going through all these columns and it's saying, or rows and columns. So this first colon is saying get all the rows. And then we have a comma and then we're looking at column values now. And computers start indexing at index zero. So this is the second value or pixel zero. And then it's saying grab pixel zero all the way through to the end. This colon and then nothing else means all the way to the end. And we're grabbing those values. And you can see this, this makes sense because if you go down to the Y train where we're just wind this first column, we're saying same thing, grab all the row values and then grab only the very first column, which is our label. I hope that helped. I'm going to close Visual Studio Code. So one thing that I am confused about with her code is if we look back to our data, the test data, um, we do have a label here. So I would assume that we would also create a Y test so that way we can actually score our function and get an idea of how good it is performing once we train it. So I'm not quite sure as to why she's grabbing all the values but I'm sure it'll be more clear. I guess I just don't understand the data enough. It's interesting, but wait. Oh, okay. There we go. I knew I made a mistake somewhere. She would have included that otherwise. So there actually is no feature here, so we can't score our data. Um, all this has is just the pixels, so she's just saying grab all of these. We don't need to use iLock because we're not leaving out a column. And I like that she does this uh, going through and printing out all of these different data sets. It makes it easier to understand like, okay, what kind of values do we have? How are they sorted in an array? Like is it a multi-dimensional array? Is it just a vector? And it helps clear up uh, confusion with regards to that. So we can see like, this is a multi-dimensional array, 2D array. You have a row for each pixel value for each uh, num numerical image and then for the Y train all we have is just a vector a one dimensional array that just has the values of the results that we're looking for it's also uh, some good discussion here uh, this is a multi-class classification problem and that's what I was a bit confused yesterday uh, as I was going through the blood problem and understanding who would donate blood. It, it still is a classification problem. There's just different types of classifiers. It's just in a range of zero to one. 
I was confused because there's classification and then regression. Regression is basically predicting like how much the house price goes on. And I think when it comes to regression, it's basically a continuous amount of numbers. Like a house can be any price for the most part. Uh, and you're not classifying how much that house costs. But with the blood type, we know that it's only between 0 and 1. It's just a probability. So I, I would go on to say then that all probabilities are going to be uh, a classification problem, not a regression problem. But feel free to correct me if that's not right, and I'm sure it isn't. And there's something that I'm not thinking of, but it makes sense to me that that would be the case. All right, so this very first line right here, what we're doing is reshaping the array into one that has in the first um, access point, I don't know, in the first column of it, you're having how many images there are. So this is actually just saying call the shape function, access the first element in it with zero index. And that's going to return how many rows are in the array. And then we have 28 pixels by 28 pixels for each image. And then she goes through and just does a simple little display of some of the pictures. So basically what we're doing here is we're calling matplotlib and just displaying some of the values. Uh, this is going to be accessing the 6th, 7th, and 8th pictures um, from the array. So to show some more pictures, let's go with a different selection here and just get a better understanding of what we're looking at. Is there not enough? All right, so I'm not quite sure how I accessed out of it because I thought what we're indexing is each number and there should be thousands of pictures in here, but I changed the values a little bit and we can just see that there's some different numbers. Um, yeah, just gives us better understanding of our data.
So we're adding another color channel in gray here, which is interesting. And I don't fully understand it, so I'm not going to try to explain it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of confused, but it's all good. Part of the learning experience. All right, so pretty much so far, we've gone through things that I know. Um, not quite sure why we're reshaping it, but I'm just bet that I'll figure that out in the future. So now we get in feature standardization, which was like the PCA that I was talking about. Um, and it just helps our model fit to the data better. So I'm going to go along with this, see if I know anything that I'm doing and understand um, what's going on. This doesn't make sense to me. So what we're trying to do is just uh, change the values from going from 0 to 255 to going from 0 to 1 for the most part. So what we're doing is changing the mean of the data to 0. So values can go from negative something to positive something, but they'll be a lot less. And it allows our model to fit better.
what we're doing is doing uh, one hot encoding. So it's basically transforming all of our labels into all zeros from uh, zero to nine. So we're having 10 then overall. Um, and basically whichever number we're looking for. So in this case, she shows it by uh, this matplotlib plot. Um, the value is three, so it's in the fourth position because zero, one, two, three, and that's where our one is. The rest are zero. So there will only ever be one in one position, and then the rest are going to be zeros. What did I do? Hmm. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Hello? Okay, she has... It's weird that a semicolon plt.show? Do I need a semicolon? No, not anymore. Why is this a two dimensional array? <laughs> There's like a reverse one hot encoding thing going on right now. I'm going to go ahead and assume that this is my fault from something that I did. This is strange though. All right, so I'm not quite sure what's going on, so I'm going to go back up to my Y train description and see the difference that I have. Yeah, so something happened to our Y train. I'm going to guess, well, the only time that I could have changed was in here. This Y cate to category. So I want to print Y train. Oh, yeah, it has to be the very last thing that's outputted wow okay something is getting messed up right now so if we go back up here and look at our white train it was so nice and 
perfect, and I don't know what's going on. If I go over here, boom, we're working again, right? Like, everything's going good. Quite strange. That's why I love them, man. I love figuring out why the computer is not doing what I expect it to do. Because, like, it's something that I'm doing, but there's a solution somewhere. I just have to find it. What I'm really hoping it's not, though, is some change in Kyrie's, uh, Kyros, that, like, an update since she put that out there that's like messing this up for me because that would be really difficult to find out Does this look better? And here's the other thing too, when you don't change anything and you just rerun it and it works, like what is going on? But we now are working. We're we're going good. It's all good guys. See so yeah, I'm just not gonna mess with that. That's good. So we know that this one is five, um, just because that's the only number that's actually activated. So I'd say, like, this doesn't make sense, though, why this is in the one zero one two three position. But I didn't change it, so we're good now. It's looking good. All right, so now we begin creating our begin creating our neural net. So model equals sequential. So now we're initializing it, and then we're adding layers right now. So as she has it in here, we are putting in. The standardized data, which if we go back up here, uh, I actually do not know where we initialize this. Let's find this.
so standardize we haven't actually declared we did declare a function called standardize but we would be passing something in if that was our function so I'm going to go and look at the lambda curies example uh, or documentation rather so lambda is telling us the function so it actually is our standardized function that we're passing in we're just not using parentheses which is strange uh, not sure how that works but basically this is just us standardizing our data around uh, a zero mean it's cool and notice it just helped a lot I understood that we were using standardize once I um, looked at the documentation helped clear up things for me Also guys, um, I just decided right now, I'm going to start live streaming these. I haven't decided where, whether it's Twitch or YouTube, and basically just have the video upload by itself onto YouTube. Um, this will be one where it's just straight through. I don't really take a break um, and do time lapses because I feel like people wanna go through this with me. So if anybody actually wants to do that, then I wanna give them the time and chance to do that it also helps me out a lot because I don't have to worry about um, I don't have to worry about editing it and putting time-lapse and music in and this whole process that takes up more time so that'll help streamline the process and it helps people follow along more too All right, so Curious is actually, sorry, I keep calling it Curious. Uh, Curious is really simple, actually. I almost like it more than TensorFlow. And what we're doing is just creating a simple neural net. Lambda is the first one, and as she says, it does simple arithmetic operations. I don't necessarily understand exactly what's doing, um, but we're passing in the shape of our data. Um, and then flan transforms all of the data into a one-dimensional array, so just a list of all the pixel values. And then dense connects all the neurons, um, as she says, from the previous layers. So it's fully connected, fully meshed together. And we use 10 because that's how many labels we have. And see if she says... Um, in the last layer, we have to specify output dimensions. Okay, so we're passing in 10 because we have 10 labels and we have to specify our output. So it makes sense. Standardize input shape. So where is input shape? Input. 
Input shape. Oh, I need to say equals. What's going on now? Softmax got an axis. happening my dude mess up hmm. uh, axis says that later on oh Okay, cool. So what actually changed was this is what I was like fearing earlier um, that this wouldn't work. So now in Lambda, you actually don't put standardize. Is this the right place to put this though? Standardize. Let's see, step 15. All right, yeah, I'm at the right place. Do soft max directly. So let's go check out the dense function. So do I need an activation function? Let's look this up. Apply softmax, activation, dense layer, curays. I'm just going to call it curays forever. Oh, okay, so I need to separate these out. Oh, never mind. So let's use a different activation function. Let's use tan h. Sequential object has no attribute. Output share. <laughs> Output hmm. So let's see if anybody else had problems with this too Hey boy. <laughs> oh. 
Typo. <laughs> I hate everything. Oh, this happens. Oof. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm special, guys. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> wow. Jesus. Okay. Cool. So this takes in, I understand. So this lambda is just saying, okay, any input, you need to standardize it around a zero mean, um, average, I guess that's the same thing. Um, and then your input shape is going to be 28 pixels by 28 pixels. And we're only going to have one color value, which is just one. That's where we had to add it in the first place. Makes sense. And then our output is going to be a dense layer. So we're going to connect all of these neurons together and we're going to use an activation function. We'll see if we can change this back to softmax. No, it doesn't like it. So I'm going to actually use Relu. Um, Relu can pull up a picture of it. Relu, Relu, Relu looks like this. This is the type of activation function compared to that's soft plus. Let's look up soft max. So soft max is the range from zero to one, and Relu um, is a harder one. Relu is more popular uh, because you have like it's because I think you don't have negative values. I can't remember the exact reason why. I honestly forgot so much of the stuff that I learned because I never applied it and it's hard to really remember all the little nuances unless it's like your job and you use it a lot and all the time. So didn't know. Alright, so now we're going to make the network. So we're going to use the loss function to measure how good the network is doing and optimizer. So this is basically like gradient descent. Um, so we're going to improve our neural network over time to minimize our error. And then metrics. Metrics just sort of is another way to determine how good we're doing. Uh, yeah. Not quite sure. I'm also watching the E-League. <laughs> Uh. So we're setting our learning rate here to 0 0.001, which is a pretty low learning rate, but she has her reasons. I don't know if I actually have to have this indented either. Categorical cross entropy. Not quite sure why this is invalid syntax, as it's saying. Model.compile, and then that should be linked to that. I wonder if it's because I have a space in between these. No. I just want to run this real quick. You know, I advise very much against copying code. So is this a thing like, all right, even though that works and I could just copy and paste this, I want to find out 
what I am doing wrong. Model dot compile optimizer. Oh, extra dot. There we go. Does this work without? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Took a while. If anybody's actually watching this and learning something from it, first off, I appreciate you. I'm really grateful. Because, uh, obviously, like, I'm learning too, and I'm just trying to help everybody out too. B. I'm trying to help people out while I'm learning too, but I'm trying to explain as best as I possibly can because I obviously know so much. How long is this notebook? Because we're well over an hour now. Ooh, we're actually pretty close. But so far away. All right. Um, so yeah, I'm going to stop there. Cross-validation. That'll be good enough for tomorrow's video and then understand and debug everything as we're going through it. So thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far into the video, you're awesome. You're a trooper. I really appreciate you. Um, I'm hoping that this helps anybody. If you're watching it, um, you know, in a way, it's just for me to have a record of me doing this. But hopefully somebody can learn off of this, too. And, you know, it's a learning experience for me. And then I can teach you more stuff, too, along the road. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And that'll be it for now. Goodbye.